Hey everybody and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. Boy, we're excited to do this show today. So thank you for joining us. I think we have Randy, Gina, and Jesse all in the chat. They're going to moderate for us, so we're super excited about that. So as many of you know, we just got back from a wonderful plant-based cruise with the Windstar Cruise Line and Lots of people over the past week have been asking us if we would please do a video about how we eat healthy when we are traveling. And so due to popular demand, here we are. That's what we're going to cover today. So I'm waiting for Tom to make a cup of tea because we had some technical issues right at the last minute and um, he needs a cup of tea to calm his nerves. It's so nerve wracking when something goes wrong with the sound right when you're getting ready to go live. There wasn't so, anything wrong, it's just that the guy didn't have it turned on. All the way. guy didn't have the sound turned on all the way. That can be an issue. Um, sometimes it's the simple things that we miss. But anyway, uh, we have put together a fun little um, presentation for you. We are not going to bore you like your grandpa did with uh, slides from all of their vacation. But because so many of you want to know how you can travel and still eat healthy, we took pictures and documented it. And here he is. Hey everybody. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the little program I put together with Tammy is, is almost mostly about the food. I, I do admit <laughs> I did have to slip in one iguana one monkey and one sloth oh there we go but i think they're all in the same slide so it goes like that yeah yeah, yeah. so it'll be yeah. it'll be pretty yeah. fast no, it won't it, be too painful it's about the food yeah so. so you know when you do adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle that first trip that you take is a little bit like Ooh, what mm -hmm. how are we going to do this where are we going to eat what are we going to eat but um we adopted this lifestyle in 2013 and we went on a road trip like one month into that um, and I just cooked a whole lot of stuff ahead of time, packed it in our cooler. Oh, do I have lipstick on my teeth? Tom's telling me I have lipstick on my teeth. Uh, so thanks, thanks. Sometimes that happens. Um, <laughs> we're all friends here. Um, and so, have, and we were able we were able to do it and so that was like right off the bat we had a family emergency we had to go and I just had to figure out how to make it work and we have done numerous road trips um, flights cruises um, all kinds of fun things since then and um, we we never starve and we also never give in and don't eat um, plant-based. We manage to make it work wherever we go, however we travel, and um, we make do. And so we're going to share some of that with you today. And if you have questions, feel free to ask questions in the chat. You can preface your question with three question marks and with three question marks. That just helps those pop out at us so that um, we can be sure to see them. And then if we happen to miss it, then the moderators will repeat it for us so that um, we can do it. So let's get, Tom, let's get started. I mean, to start pushing some buttons. Yeah, start pushing some buttons, but only okay. the right buttons. Well, <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, there, just as a housekeeping thing, there are two really short clips in this uh, uh, video. Video clips where Tammy's showing some stuff on screen. The volume will perhaps be either too loud or too soft in those. I apologize in advance, um, but it's not you; it's me, and and they're short, and so just adjust as needed and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. so what we do want to tell you is that um, for this particular trip that we just got back from a week ago today actually, uh, we went to uh, Panama, we went through the Panama Canal 
and then on to Costa Rica. And we were on a National Health Association sponsored cruise with the Windstar Cruise Line. And the National Health Association works with a fabulous travel agent, Lisa McCarl. And we've done three trips with the NHA and we were actually the tour um, guides on this one, which was really fun for us. And we had a group of 24 people, all whole food, plant-based, and all of the food was SOS free and gluten free. And um, we have links in the show notes for you to go to the NHA website and um, you can view some of the upcoming trips that they have planned. They have a number of trips, cruises and some land travel that are coming up, safaris, um, all kinds of amazing things. And we really want to thank Lisa McCarl as well as Wanda Huberman from the NHA for all of the groundwork that they have done over the past few years to be able mm -hmm. to set up being able to travel and eat the way that we eat. Yeah, the main middle of part of this, and, and Tammy does detail a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner uh, that uh, we enjoyed while we were on board the ship, that the the uh, more challenging part was getting to Panama and coming home from Panama. And we're going to talk about that as well. Yeah. So, okay. So let's do it. Um, and so. I can narrate um, for the photos that don't have any video with them and tell you what we're doing. Yeah, I'll put you in the little window so they'll, they'll, they'll know you're here. Okay, here we go. Here, here's our first, well, that's an actual picture that we took. That's a panoramic picture of, of um, from uh, Antonio Manuel National Park. In outside of in uh, Costa wait, Rica, Capos, C Capos, or something like that. <laughs> so, so here's Tammy, and then here's our first slide. I got to switch to the computer, and what do we got here? Okay, so I did a little bit advance um, preparation, of course. So we like to travel with hummus. Hummus does need to be frozen to get through TSA. Now, a couple people, there's always an exception. There's always a TSA agent somewhere that misses it or lets it go through. But most often times, they will confiscate hummus unless it is frozen. Just like they will confis confiscate, I can't even say it, confiscate, confiscate peanut butter or almond butter unless it's like in a sandwich but if you just have a tub of it they don't like that and so they will usually make you toss it out so what i do is i make my homemade hummus this happens to be the oven roasted garlic hummus a new recipe that i have up on the blog i make a, a batch or two of that i divide it up into those are about um, eight ounce containers and I will freeze a couple of them and then you can see there on the um, other picture that I have some hummus that is on a dehydrator tray so I will also dehydrate a batch of hummus I'll do that at like 130, 135 degrees. I spread it pretty thin. I'll do several trays of it. Uh, it will vary how long it takes. I usually just put it in and let it do its thing for about eight hours overnight. Um, how long will depend on how humid it is, where you live, how wet your hummus is, and how thick that you make it. Now, the container that you see at the top of the photo with the two tubs of hummus, that is the dehydrated hummus that I have then taken and put through a spice grinder. You can also put it in a small food processor, but I do find that the spice grinder gets it more fine, which makes a better texture at the end and we'll show you how we reconstitute that once we get to our destination we actually like to save that for the trip home because i don't have any frozen hummus left after 10 days or two weeks of being gone and so then we also pack carrots and cucumber slices and um, some mary's gone crackers you know whatever you like to dip in your hummus would work for that then this is some rice. We actually, we took some of this with us, but we didn't use it. This is shelf stable rice. It is two ingredients, rice 
and water. No oil, no salt. I find this at a grocery store here locally called The Nugget Market. You have to read the ingredients. Many brands have added oil and salt. Also, you'll see the little picture there. We left, um, we went to the airport at 2.30 a.m. and we snapped a picture of where we parked our car. That way, we didn't have to think about it or remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no delusion that I'm going to remember that I left the car in 20D a week, a week later, especially in the hustle bustle of trying to get in and get checked in at the airport. So we actually have a habit of snapping that photo of whatever row we're in so that we can return to it. So, um, so yeah, that was just a little aside in there. Mostly those two bags of rice are, uh, they go in the back of my carry-on, in the bottom of my carry-on bag. They're still sealed and... Um, and they're just like emotional food insurance. We didn't get into them, probably didn't need to take them, but I knew that if everything else failed... Oh, while you talk about that, I'm going to grab something. I, I knew that if everything else, anything uh, went wrong or everything else failed, I had a couple of bags of rice, one for me and one for Tammy, and we would not go hungry. So is it necessary? No. Did it make me feel better? Yeah, it did. <laughs> okay, so. and so then... Um, we didn't actually try these, but these are the leaf side dehydrated whole food plant-based meals that you can purchase. These, Dr. Greger um, posts about these on social media. Oh, I guess I'm on this camera. Oh, and I'll you, I'll put you over. It's okay. There's lots of different um, ones that you can choose from, but uh, we actually did not even need to use these on this trip because we were so prepared ourselves. And um, of course, Windstar did such a fabulous job that we just didn't need these. But these are dehydrated. You just need to take a container with you that can hold about four cups because you just add boiling water. So some of our whole food plant-based friends um, that travel like we do, they say they put it in their bowl and when they're on the plane, they just ask the flight attendant if they would um, add some boiling water to it for them. You can also, you know, heat up some water in a microwave in a hotel. Um, microwave and be able to make these in case you need to um, be able to supplement. Sometimes when you arrive at your hotel after a long flight, you're just too tired to go out and seek a restaurant. And so these can be very uh, helpful. So these are again leaf side and I ordered a bunch of them, but like I said, we didn't even need to use them, but we have them, you know, for the next time we travel. So that's something to check out or you can dehydrate some of your own food. You can make your own lentil soup or beans or what have you and dehydrate it yourself and then um, put it in sealed packages and take it with you. You just need to make sure you take a container and a spoon so that you have something that you can uh, heat those things up in and rehydrate them. Okay, so here we are on the plane. Uh, we flew United and United does have That's It bars and that's one of the snack options that you are offered and um, that package is ripped open because I ate it and then thought, oh, I should have took a picture of that. And it is just two ingredients, apples and mangoes. It's only about four bites, but I was just so pleased that they had something that was whole food, plant-based, SOS free that they were offering. And if you ask for two, they will give you two of them as well. And it's gluten-free, which, you know, for those of us who have to be gluten-free, that's also fun. And then we also, um, ahead of time, I made my quinoa banana oat muffins. Uh, I love these. Tom loves them as well. And that was breakfast because our flight was real early. Yeah, so our body was totally off. You know, normally we don't eat until lunchtime, but because we got up at 1 a.m., um, you know, we were totally out of sync on what time of day it was and when we should eat. So I made my 
quinoa banana oat muffins ahead of time. I know a lot of you use these as a staple um, item in your home as well. And then I froze them. We took six of them with us. And that way, when we get to our destinations, they do need to be refrigerated or they could turn moldy. So they're frozen when we head out. They, something just, oh, okay. Tom's messing with some cords well, here. We got some buzzing and checking out. Oh, okay. Um, and so they were frozen when we left and I put some of them in our carry-on and some went in the checked luggage. And then when we got to our hotel the first night, we put them in the refrigerator in the hotel. And then when we got to the um, cruise ship, we put them in our little mini fridge that was in our stateroom. And that way we have those for the return flight as well. Um, they have a lot of protein in them. They're extremely filling because they also have a lot of fiber. They're made with steel cut oats and rolled oats and uh, quinoa flour and bananas. And I also put raisins in them. Um, that just keeps them nice and moist, especially when we're traveling. And these with a piece of fruit can totally become a meal for us. And so we did have those, as you can see, um, that is the tray on the airport, in the airplane. And so we did have those. And then I take my own herbal tea bags as well so that we can um, just ask for hot water and then I put my own tea bag in and enjoy um, the kind of tea that I like. I find oftentimes the only decaf some places have is chamomile and I'm just not a big fan of that so I'll just take my own teas with me and that works out great. So also the night before we left we went ahead and made our lunches for the next day. And of course they were chopped salads and um, Tom made his and I made mine and we were using up the fresh vegetables that we had on hand. I had asparagus that we lightly steamed. We had a lot of little uh, salad tomatoes. We had potatoes that we cut up and put in our salads and a little drizzle of vinegar on them and we put them in containers that if we didn't have an opportunity to wash we could just go ahead and toss them so don't take something that you know you would be sad to lose we take our own silverware and napkins we take our containers and we put them inside a ziploc bag or a bag with a twist tie so if there is any leakage it all gets captured these go through to tsa just fine we always do this when we are traveling um, by plane or by car and the frozen hummus that we have acts like an ice pack which keeps our lunch salad nice and cold so we each take a backpack and we pack these in our backpack and it works out great so just pack your silverware your napkins and you're good to go then we just go to the food court so that we have a nice table to sit at in the airport and we enjoy our lunch and of course we had Japanese sweet potatoes. I didn't think to take a picture till I started eating it. Um, I had used um, a, a plastic knife, cut it in half and shared it with Tom. And it was delicious. We love them just oven roasted. They don't need anything on them. And just having that extra bit of starch gives us a lot of satiety so that we feel satisfied and full. Next slide. And again, that frozen hummus in with all the food really keeps everything nice and cold for us. And then it thawed out. Um, we didn't need it for lunch and we had it later on the next flight. Um, we flew to Houston and we had a, like a four hour layover in Houston. And so when we got on the flight in Houston for Panama, then um, later that day, we were able to have that hummus. It had thawed out enough that we could scoop it up. And I think we probably have a picture of that. Okay. But in... Um, well, this is the, the next slide is the, is the little tour of, yeah. the, count of the food counters so um, we take turns going for a walk 
uh, without having all of our carry-on stuff on us. Uh, so Tom was sitting with the carry-on um, backpacks and I went for a stroll through the airport because we had such a long wait. And I always look to see what's available just out of curiosity. And I made a little video for you. So we're gonna try playing it. We're gonna try playing it. Hopefully we'll have sound. If not, I'll yeah. narrate. Okay, well, it, you'll see, watch the meter over there. It'll, it'll show when okay. we get going, so. Great. So here's four, push play. And it takes a moment to catch. Here we go. So we're here at the Houston airport, and I just was looking to see what they have. Not that I need anything because we packed plenty, but look, you can get some pineapple, or you can get grapes. You can get some juice. It doesn't look like they have any plant-based yogurt. Of course, bottled water you can get. They do have oat milk here. And I did see they have organic dried fruit that you can also get. So just a few choices. You just really have to look wherever you go. And sometimes you can find some little jams. There's the That's It bars. If you fly on United, they actually give you these uh, for a snack. And they're just fruit. The ingredients, apples and strawberries, just fruit, that's all it is. So, you just have to look. We always pack things for us, and that works well. So, those are all roasted, salted nuts. And, of course, tons of candy. Lots of junk food here, but you can get some things. It's done, it stopped. Okay, so um, that was just what we saw at one little spot um, in Houston, just in the gate area where we were. Uh, I also can tell you that so you can do a search Houston for airport. vegan food options at whichever airport you are flying in or out of or have a layover at. And um, you can usually find something. Sometimes there will be a Mexican restaurant where you can get beans and rice. You just need to make sure that, you know, those are not made with, the beans aren't made with lard and that the rice isn't made with chicken broth. Uh, we've been able to get something at an Asian restaurant, fresh spring rolls or some miso soup or, you know, rice and steamed vegetables can be an option as well. We even um, in Florida or Texas, I can't remember which place now, one time we did find a salad place that had baked potatoes and I just ordered two plain baked potatoes and had some salsa and put salsa on them and that worked. So uh, just you look around. Some places do have some salads. You just have to make sure they don't have cheese on them and the little bottles of the California balsamic vinegars, they have the little travel sizes and those are three ounces and those will go through TSA no problem. And now you can have a quart size little clear bag and you can stuff it with as many 3.4 ounce or smaller ball bottles of liquid and get that through TSA. We did not take any vinegar with us this time because we knew that we were going to be fed very well on the Windstar cruise. So we didn't have to worry about that. There is a little bit of talk about the leaf side. Um, we did try one of these, I just remembered, before we went. Mm -hmm. Tom made one that had some kind of noodles or something in it yeah. and it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it, was, it would have been a, it would have been a treat if I was you know stranded in some hotel somewhere and that's right. what there was to eat. And uh, we had so many other things we needed to eat up that we wound up not taking them. But yeah, and, and you had the hummus going on. So right. So um, people are asking how do they taste. A couple people did answer in the chat and said they've used them, and some aren't too bad. And and 
you know, some aren't that great. So um, it's food. Yeah. So everybody <laughs> that I've talked to has pretty much said the same thing that they're not their favorite things, but boy, when you need them, they sure come in it, handy. It's more fun than not eating if you're hungry. There you go. And if you take um, Wanda Huberman from the NHA told me that if you have some some starch to put with them, that makes them so much better. So either those packages of rice, or if you do take some potatoes with you that are already cooked and can add that to them, that that really helps. Also, Bob's Red Mill does have some potato flakes and they are just potato flakes. There's no oil, no salt added and you can they're just dehydrated potato flakes and so just putting some boiling water with them will make them like mashed potatoes and then if you take some seasoning mixes with you which when we road travel we do that i will take the chili lime seasoning mix from well your world i love that you can take a mediterranean or italian blend from local spicery i just put them in smaller little containers so they don't take up a lot of room and then we can add those to if we like just get a plain baked potato we get steamed rice and some steamed vegetables at an asian restaurant or we get beans and rice from a mexican restaurant then we can add a lot of flavor by just adding a already blended seasoning mix can make a really big difference so um, or dehydrate something of your own soup or lentil stew or something okay okay so so far we got on the plane we had our early morning snack we had our muffin breakfast we had a massive lunch at the houston airport and then it's back on the plane for the longer leg of our trip uh for another four and a half hour run and we still had more food for <laughs> mid-afternoon snacks. So, um, so Tammy's, uh, we've got a slide ready for Tammy to talk about that because okay. we didn't actually get where we're going until nighttime, which we're gonna see in just a moment here. I'm gonna cool. push this button. All um, right, I'm excited. Okay, so here is that hummus we were talking about. So we had some cucumbers in the fridge. So we sliced up some cucumbers to put in our bag. Again, that frozen hummus kept them nice and, and cold and crisp. We also had the Mary's Gone Crackers, and then I didn't get a picture, but we also had a bag of um, baby carrots that we took with us. And so we had a spoon, and you can just stir that um, hummus so that if it separated at all, but this one really didn't. I think actually we just used the cucumber slices and gave it a little bit of a stir. It was still a bit frozen in the center, so we were kind of scooping from around the edge and it tasted amazing. And I have to say that other passengers and the flight attendants um, always really look at what we have and we've gotten a lot of um, nice compliments too because we have eaten some of our salads on the plane and um, flight attendants have been wow that looks amazing <laughs> and we're like well we packed it and so it's good and then that's on the far right that's panama at night time uh, right at the canal so yeah and so. that's um the panama uh, canal is showing in that and we could see the lights from the ships that were um out uh, in in the water waiting yeah, very uh, some faint, of them very faintly in the far left of that little yep. picture of the city lights so okay next picture we are now um what did we do okay we had that on the plane and yeah what, and, and that's all we ate because our lunch was so big we got in really late and we got in really late and um we had uh, lisa had arranged for a transfer from the airport to they found us in, you know, yeah at the terminal at, yeah and so um at the terminal our driver found us so the hummus and the mary's crackers was our dinner cucumbers was dinner yeah and it, and it was it was satisfying Very. yeah well because it's a lot of protein and fiber all those beans yeah and beans greens and vegetables yeah and, it was yeah. delicious and we were very satisfied yeah and so um and our driver had ice cold uh water for oh, us had the carrots i was shoving carrots to my mouth because i knew that they we couldn't take them through customs remember no no that's that was for coming back 
That was coming back. Yeah. We, yeah. Well, anyway, we ate all day on the way down. <laughs> there was no shortage of food on this epic journey to the uh, halfway around the world. Yeah, way. yeah. And so then um, our driver, we had a, a, quite a long drive to the Bristol Hotel in Panama City. Yeah. And then, um, and that was delightful, and they were all ready for us, and we had a beautiful room. So this is now the next morning. And then morning. the next morning, we went to the breakfast buffet, and Wanda Huberman had worked diligently with the hotel to get them um, ready for those of us who were coming um, that were whole food, plant-based, and SOS-free. So they had um, fruit, which they replenished when we um, first got up there. A lot of people had already hit it, but you can see my plate was just filled I with fresh fruit. I think non-plant-based people were eating our food. Well, what were they thinking? I don't know. Uh, well, at least they were eating something healthy. And so lots of fresh fruit there. And you could see they had whole fruits that you were also welcome to take with you. We didn't, but we could have. So, um, but we had plenty of fresh fruit to choose from. And normally Tom and I don't eat breakfast when we're at home, but when we travel, we go ahead and eat breakfast um, when it is available. So they did have the option where you could order oatmeal just cooked with water. And then they had all these wonderful toppings to put on top of that, nuts and seeds and some dried fruit. And then they also had a huge array. This is only part of the fresh juices that they had. There was no added sugar to these. These were juice blends from lots of wonderful tropical fruits that they had. And that is um, a really big part of meals in Central America. We encountered this quite a bit. So that's Tom's oatmeal bowl um, with his toppings on it. They had, you can see they had chia seeds and pecans and um, pepitas and I think you had raisins on there as well. I was loading up on my omega-3s. You were. <laughs> and uh, I went ahead and ordered an acai bowl and it was wonderful. So it had oats and nuts, banana and strawberries and blueberries and it had cooked quinoa on it, which was really unusual, but delightful. And so that was very delicious and we were really happy. I also ordered a pot of hot water and I had my own tea bag and that kind of confused the guy a little bit, but yeah, I was like, yeah, just a pot of hot water. <laughs> That's what I want. And so then we did have a wait um, while we were waiting for our bus to come to transport us to the cruise ship and so they had a room for us to wait in and they had again they had fresh fruit and they had cold water they had iced tea and coffee there were some treats there that weren't plant-based but then they also had this huge beautiful bowl of fresh fruit for us which we were very appreciative of and then we got off the bus and we were greeted with panamanian dancers yes and then it was and our, then the, our first dinner. This is well. No, we we're showing them breakfast, been, lunch, and yeah, dinner. Yeah, this is going to be breakfast. Of so the next of course, day. when we got on the ship, um, it was early afternoon. But they had a beautiful buffet set up for us that was plant-based, SOS free, and absolutely delicious. And they ushered us right in there as soon as we got our um, cabin and um, fed us. Yeah, and we have a series depicting that after breakfast because we put them in order, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Well, not it's not all the specific first day. No, I, that's yeah, what I mean. Right. We, we chose a breakfast, we chose a lunch, and we chose a dinner. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so this is um, a little peek at breakfast. Is this a video, Tom, mm -mm. or is this, this is just a picture? Uh, oh, wait, this it's is a, a video. video. This is the video, okay. I'm going to push the button. Push the button. Let's see if it works. They say that my mic is making on the Windstar ship, and this is breakfast. So we have plant-based soy milk and plant-based almond milk, a detox juice, blackberry smoothie, coconut vanilla granola. Look at these. These are just gorgeous fresh 
berries and pineapple and watermelon, nuts and seeds and flax, dried fruit. If you want to make a salad, you've got plant-based coconut curry dressing and lots of veggies, plant-based balsamic and a plant-based lemon dill and some beautiful greens as well. In addition morning. to that, we have, good morning, morning. good, plant-based pistachio yeah, muffins, chickpea bread, and let's see what we have in here. We have, oh, plant-based oatmeal, porridge, fabulous. Here's Chef <laughs> Graham. Hello, Chef. Hello. And this is plant-based tofu. tofu, turmeric and onion scrambled tofu. Amazing. Okay, we're back. I see that Lisa and John, who we traveled with on the cruise, are in the chat. Good to see you guys here. We had so much fun um, visiting with you and traveling with you. We This is the, the great thing about going on these um, trips with the NHA groups is that you get to be with like-minded okay, people. You get to meet people uh -huh. from all across the United States. And it's just so much fun to um, get to know some new people, make some new friends. And um, we just had such a great time with everyone. So I'm glad you guys decided to join us today. Um, that was really great. And um, let's see, I'm just looking to see if I've missed any questions. Oh, Jesse says that advertisements just blasted them on, on the, this live. Okay. How is that? How are they doing that? I don't know. That is crazy. Okay. So I'm just looking to make sure that I haven't missed any questions. It looks like we're good there. So, um, breakfast every morning was that beautiful salad bar that we saw as well as two hot or two to four hot dishes. There would be greens sometimes, sometimes tofu scramble, hot oatmeal, um, the muffins, smoothies, the juice shots, just a huge variety. They also, we can see in this picture, that they also would make pancakes to order and they did a variety of them. There was banana pancakes and blueberry and strawberry and that was really fun. They had the little parfaits um, with the granola that they were making for us and that was delicious. And then of course all the amazing fruits and the tropical fruits, the pineapple and the papaya and the mango were so delicious. They had watermelon and a variety of berries and grapes and there was just no shortage of delicious foods. They also made a wide variety of oil-free salad dressings and you know you were never going hungry because there was something for everyone's um, personal taste preferences that you could find and they would you know make anything for you that you know or make adjustments if we asked them to do so and so then of course you know, we went through the Panama Canal. And, and I'm so, going to let Tom talk about that because, like, he was super, super well, excited about that. So this, this is one of our non-food slides. There's <laughs> just a couple of these. And that, they, they have a little uh, application website that you can download on your phone. They told us about it in advance of writing there. And that is actually our ship. At the moment, it was actually going through the canal. Uh, both the forward view out the front of the ship and the uh, remote camera view of our ship in the canal. So that's our proof that we have transited the Panama Canal. We've got our registration numbers. We even got traversing the canal pins to uh, to wear oh, on that's a, right. to, to wear on a hat or something, or put on the side of the refrigerator. I'm not sure what to do with that. I one. know. I forgot about that. So well, here, that's here you are. I'm going to get your next slide ready, Tammy. Okay. Uh, so that was a big, exciting day, and then of course lunch would roll around. Okay. So here's what they did with um, on the Windstar ship for those of us who, who were whole food, plant based. Now anyone was welcome. To, to join us. But what they did for breakfast and lunch is they had uh, four tables designated for us in the same place every day in the main dining room. 
And then we also had um, two specific waiters that waited on us uh, for every meal. So they got to know our names and what we liked and um, they were just really nice guys and that was really fun. And so there was always a salad bar for breakfast and lunch with a huge variety of things to choose from. Now when I posted about this on Facebook, somebody left a comment and said, well I can eat a salad at home, I don't want that when, when I go on vacation. Well we feel the total opposite, uh, salads are a huge part of our daily food intake. As you guys well know, we eat a big chopped salad for lunch every day. We still want to have that big beautiful salad um, every day. We want to get those greens and those vegetables in. So we really appreciated that we always had access at breakfast and lunch to that big beautiful salad bar. But in addition to that, then there was always um, two to four hot options to choose from and at lunch and dinner there was also always a, a beautiful soup and so this is just showing you some of the items that they had um, hickory wood roasted portobello mushrooms those were really good if i remember right john you really um, liked those and then um, potatoes and asparagus they also did a lot of different noodle and pasta dishes that were gluten-free and tom loves hey. pasta <laughs> and so he was like super happy about that because i'm not a, as big of a pasta eater but he really loves it and i don't make pasta that much but he can always make it for himself but here was um, a stir fry with kale and mushrooms i remember how delicious that was as well and then um, beautiful soups they would they also made us different flavored breads every day and they were gluten free and they were absolutely delicious and then they would take yesterday's and turn them into croutons for the salads or to put on top of our soups and those were delicious and then of course we had lots of fresh fruit available at lunch as well and then amazing desserts there was usually at least three desserts to choose from they made these little snickerdoodle cookies for us that were gluten-free and sugar-free everything was sweetened with fruit and dates and delicious they made chocolate cakes and chocolate puddings and um, uh, cobblers and um, some little um, those chocolate balls were like one of my favorite things. Truffle, Cho truffle. Those little truffles, yeah. chocolate truffles. They were just amazing. And so um, every day was a wonderful treat. And again, um, lots of fruit. If you didn't want to eat the desserts, why wouldn't you? I don't know. Then you could just have the fruit. Um, but, you know, we indulged. But and there's a whole table of dessert there to choose there's from. There's a whole table of dessert to choose from as well as fruits. And then again, they had whole fruits always available. So you could take those back to your room. But also in our room, we had a fruit bowl and our cabin steward would replenish that for us every day we would have grapes and um, oranges and apples and bananas and um, you could take these with you when you would go on an excursion you could have them as a snack if you wanted to but then there was also a place that you could go to in the afternoon or any time of day where you could get a beverage and they also had snacks there that were it was no extra charge for it and they had plant-based options there as well little um, snacks and desserts that you could have any time of day as well as room service and you could call 24 hours a day and you could request anything that was plant-based you could say you know do you have a plant-based soup do you have an entree um, could i get a plate of fresh fruit and that was no extra fee for that as well what okay, next? 
to transition to our next segment here <laughs> here is our second non-food photo and so one day they this said this is way out on the very very bow of the ship it's backwards from the movie that we stole it from right but they said you know come up and um we'll take your picture um on the bow of the ship and so of course we had to indulge in that and go and have fun um that was really uh, a fun thing to get to do as well and then all of course our friends were there and um, we all watched each other be silly and take to pictures to be, be kate winslet and yes uh, um caprio yeah Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Yeah. DiCaprio. Okay. All yeah. Right. So anyway. On to uh, our reception. Okay. So the group. Um, there were 24 of us. And one night, Windstar treated us to a special private cocktail hour um, in a private little deck uh, off of the, the back, lounge. The back of the ship. The back of the ship. And um, it was just for us. And they made us plant-based appetizers. And then you could have um, be the beverage of your choice. And so these were really fun. There was, um, I believe that was uh, zucchini or cucumber. I can't remember now. And it was stuffed with quinoa. And then those were little potatoes that they had steamed and then had stuffed with, um, I don't know if it was hummus or some kind of um, uh, maybe a nut. It was so much fun. A nut they were sauce. so much fun. Yeah. They were so delicious. And um, so, you know, they really went the extra mile for us. This is our uh, group that we were traveling with. We got to know everyone. We got to sit with different people every night and visit with them and go on excursions with them. And um, I'm, we've made some really wonderful lifelong friends from going on that trip. And so um, they, you know, we asked if someone would come and take a picture of us and they were moving furniture around on the deck and um, taking pictures for us. So really personalized service on the Windstar ships. Okay, and this is the beginning of our dinner because we've done breakfast, lunch. So now this is the beginning of a dinner because I see we still have the menus out. Yes. So, so how does this work? So we had... Um, multiple tables in the dining room and so we would uh, go into the dining room at dinner time and we would just tell them we're with the plant-based group you only needed to do that the first night after that everybody knew who we all were I mean we would walk in and they would say hi Tom and Tammy Kramer and you know yeah, that the whole section you see on the left window all four of our tables were there that whole corner yes was the plant-based that area. was our whole group right there so we had a uh, two round top tables um, that sat six people we had one that sat two so if you you know wanted to have a more private dinner you could and then we had the oblong table and I think eight. that that sat eight people and so um, and then we had a menu and so the evening meal was not a buffet we were also we were in the dining room with other people who were not plant-based of course on the ship but um, you know we were kind of a little bit secluded over there with our um, plant-based people and so and then this is chef Graham who designed all of the special menus for us and um, I met with him every day uh, he was usually in the dining room at the beginning of breakfast and the at the beginning of lunch and so we would talk about how the food had been the day before how things were going and um, you know he would ask me for any if I had any suggestions or comments for him and he just went out of his way to really make things special they brought in a special pastry chef to help make our desserts um, for the cruise which was fantastic and he really did an outstanding job they were like some of the best desserts that mm. we've had on the Windstar cruises and so we had a menu I think we have a menu that's coming up Jesse that, has a question uh, yes. about does did we have any non uh, whole food plant-based people joining us for dinner we, we did at a uh, one uh, it was an excursion it was the whole ship was served the lunch on the beach one day and we did have 
a non-plant-based person go through our line and sit down at our table. A couple uh, of them, actually. Yeah. And then, um, interesting fact, when we flew out of Sacramento, California, and there was a couple on our flight to Houston, and then they saw us in the same concourse yeah. during Pam our- Pam and Mark, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, they, and they noticed that we were at the same gate that they were at, and, and we had gotten up to go walk around a bit, as were they. And so they approached us and said, hey, we saw you in Sacramento, and we're just wondering, wondering any chance that you're on your way to Panama. And we said, yeah. And they, they said, are you going on a cruise? And we said, yeah, Windstar, what about you? And they said, yes, we're on the same cruise. They were not plant-based but they were very curious and very interested. We told them about our group and what we were doing and that we had a YouTube channel. So we had a long layover. And so Pam binge watched our YouTube channel and she was really actually quite curious about plant-based. And then we you know, kept running into them, of course, on the ship. And she said, I think I'm gonna order some of your plant-based foods at dinner. And we, she said, can I do that? And we said, yeah, anybody, anybody can order those. And anybody was welcome to come in and join us for breakfast or lunch. Yeah. I don't know that anybody did. Yeah, some members of, of the group that would want to have a private meal with, with, with their co-traveler would go off to another venue and still they had the ability to order yeah. off of the plant-based menu. Yeah, you could eat in any of the restaurants on the ship and still get our menu items served to you. You did not have to go into our um, designated dining room area in order to get our food. So here is a, a sample menu from one of the um, evening meals. So you can see we had appetizers, starters that we could choose from. We had more than one salad that we could choose from. There was always a delicious soup. We always had the soup. And oftentimes, Tom and I would choose a different appetizer. Um, each of us would choose a different appetizer and a different salad just so we could sample them. If you wanted to have two appetizers, you could get two appetizers. And then we also had two main entrees that we could choose from. And we usually did get a different one just so we could taste it. And if you were still hungry, you could order a second one. They were happy to bring you a second one, or you could order both entrees. And some of the guys did do that. And then there were two or three side dishes that you could also get to go along with it. It was nice that they oftentimes they had a potato, either a sweet potato or some other kind of potato because they know that we like a lot of starch. And then there were two desserts to choose from. And we would usually get different desserts, but sometimes you'd like the other dessert better and you could ask for them to bring that to you. And one night they made an amazing chocolate mousse that our entire table was crazy for. And we yeah. all ordered a I second one. I don't know if we have one. a picture of that, but yeah, the, the whole table ordered second salad. Well, I don't have a picture of it on here, but I have a picture, I do have a picture of it. And everything of course was plated mm -hmm. beautifully as well. As you know, cruise food is, it's also, you know, it's not just the food, but it's how they plate it as well is so gorgeous and decorative and enticing. And what do you want to say, babe? Um, well, unrelated to the food, um, I, I saw some folks talking about ads showing up unexpectedly. I, I see over here on our control panel, there's a new window. It's called ads, ads uh, automator. That's a new setting. And, and right now it is clicked on. I didn't know it was there. It's something new. And so evidently I have to click that off. I'm afraid to click on it right now for fear of interrupting the stream. So, um, so I will. Karen find... said that it actually kicked her to a different channel. Oh, wow. Jeez. And Gina said some people are getting the ads and some are not. So if you subscribe to the well, no that, ad. That, that sounds like ads automate. I don't know what ads automator is, but I see it over here on the control panel. And so in the future, I will turn it off for today. I apologize. I don't want to mess with it and break something on this stream. Right. Uh, but I, uh, but it's a new thing that evidently they're doing. And so I will have to um, 
figure out how to turn that off for our next live, which we have several coming up. So especially we don't want that going on with Dr. Barnard next week. No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're so sorry for that, but you know, YouTube has changed things. Since. Well, they're, they're constantly changing things. Yes. Course. Yes. Yeah. And so we'll look into that and see how we can shut it off. If you, we subscribe to the no ads. So we don't get to see So that. we don't get any ads. Um, and that might be why some people aren't getting ads. Maybe they, sub, they oh, if, are yeah, subscribed. If you're on YouTube premium, you won't see ads. Yeah. Right. Right. So, okay. So, okay. So, so, so anyway, we would, um, we would just tell our waiter what we wanted and, um, and then, you know, we would enjoy this wonderful multi-course, um, meal. This is, um, a slice of the bread. Um, oftentimes they also made some kind of a little chutney that we could put on the bread. We would have a beautiful soup. That is a risotto that I ordered that night. It was delicious. I loved it. It had squash in it and um, the peas and it was lovely. If there was pasta, Tom usually got the pasta. I think the next slide shows the pasta dish that he had. All of the Everything was also gluten-free, so I could eat everything. I really appreciated that. That's a side of roasted vegetables, roasted, of course, without any oil. And then um, that was a chocolate dessert that was delicious with the fruit. Um, you know me, I love anything chocolate, and they certainly had a lot of chocolate mm. options, but there was always something not chocolate. For those who don't like chocolate or can't have yeah, chocolate. Speaking of chocolate, that's it for the shipboard food, but that doesn't mean we didn't go to the jungle and chow down. <laughs> that's right. And if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I did post a lot of pictures of different meals that we had um, while we were on the ship. And, um, you know, we enjoyed everything that we had. It was lovely. So one of the highlights for us was being able to go to what they called a chocolate farm. And this was in um, Costa Rica. And so um, there I'm holding the, the cacao fruit. Um, that is what it looks like when they pick it off of the tree. And we got to taste it actually in all the various stages. So we got to taste it raw. We got to, to taste the, the, the pod itself. The outside of it has this like creamy texture on it. We got to taste that. We got to taste the pod um, without that, just raw. Then we got to taste it once it had been toasted. And then um, I actually got to, do we have a picture of, I got to um, grind some of it. I think we do have a picture, the next picture. Okay, so then um, they had a mill and we would put the, those are the roasted cacao, put those in that. And I'm sure they have a big industrial one that they use, but then um, I ground that um, by a crank. It had a crank and you can see that ball there. You made that right um, on site. That's, we made that right on site. So what's falling on the leaf is what I was grinding, and it was so soft that you could roll it in a ball. It was like Play-Doh. It, yeah, it was kind of like Play-Doh. It smelled amazing. We also got to taste it um, right from that leaf, and it was delicious. We did not find it to be bitter at all. Different um, cacao can taste differently. This did not taste bitter. And then they actually put it in molds to make a heart out of it. And we did buy some of that to bring it home. And you can just add your sweetener of choice to it and melt it and turn it into a fondue or you can leave it in that cake. You can grate it with a food grater and um, you know put it into your chocolate desserts if you want to. And also on that farm, they had all different kinds of citrus trees. They I don't, do we have a picture of the bananas? You didn't include those. No. Okay. And so we got to go on a tour of the farm, and we ate things right off the trees. So star fruit and um, cinnamon, cinnamon bark, cinnamon bark 
and then um, we also we had the picture there of the vanilla they also grow vanilla beans there I did buy some vanilla beans they were amazing the aroma was incredible we got to see what those look like right on the vine that was very exciting to me because of course you guys know I love to cook and um, that was just really that was like my highlight yeah. that was the most fun ever okay. was getting to go there and then Tom had some friends so this is our third nun food uh, <laughs> slide and so we had friends in the jungle an iguana a white-faced monkey uh, and up to in the little square next to Tammy just to the left of Tammy's little square is a sloth hanging from that tree and then I also found a Tammy in the jungle right there on the walkway in the lower right hand corner so so all of that wildlife was present in the jungle yep yep it was it was okay so now it's time to get ready to go home what's happening okay so so, the cruise is over. We're out of the jungle. <laughs> yeah. So um, we had, um, we well, we went for that, um, a tour. We left the cruise, the ship, and we went for a tour in Panama City, and not in Panama City, in um, San Jose, San Costa Rica. And we went for a tour, and then we went to our hotel, and we stayed at the Marriott, and again, we want to thank Wanda Huberman from the NHA. She worked with the staff at the Marriott to arrange for food for us that was whole food, plant-based, and SOS free. So the little entree there on the left was beans, rice, salsa, and um, avocado that we had for an evening meal. Um, the next day for breakfast, they had a big breakfast buffet and they had one section that they had made special for the plant-based eaters. We had lots of fresh fruit. We had oatmeal to choose from, guacamole, beans, beans lentils, um, and then they also had pancakes for us that were gluten-free, oil-free, sugar-free. And um, so that was really nice. And we, um, we spent um, a whole day there. And so we had a couple meals there. So we ate a different entree another day, which I think you just had a picture of. Did you not? Um, yeah, that, the next picture. Just uh, No, this, the next, there's another picture. Keep going. See the next picture? Uh, that's that's the, that's oh is that that's at, the at the airport? airport. That's at the airport. Okay, yeah. so um, so we had delicious food there at the Marriott that uh, Wanda had arranged for those of us that were staying there, and then the next day at the airport. Uh, we got there early because, of course, an international flight, and we had about three hours of time, you know, to be in the airport. And so we found a little Asian place that had different types of bowls that you could get. And so um, we each ordered a bowl. It ha I think mine was a quinoa bowl, and it came with a lot of fresh vegetables and fruit and avocado. And I forget which one Tom ordered, um, but mine we had were... rice and tofu and that's mushrooms right. Yours and had beans. tofu. You had a tofu bowl. Yeah. And so and it had avocado. And then um, we were so full for that, but you know we did have a long flight home. And so that dehydrated hummus, we had put a paper cup and a spoon in our carry on. And so we had the dehydrated hummus, we had bottled water, and so we reconstituted that dehydrated hummus, and, um, and we had a bag of Mary's Gone Crackers, and so um, that became kind of a dinner snack because we weren't really that hungry. And that got us home. We also had our muffins with us. Um, as well, they also gave us the that's it bars. And so we had those. So you can see, I mean, we had no problem um, finding food, asking for what we wanted. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was actually mm. one of the easiest travel trips yeah. we and had. And what happened when we got home? And then we got home, and oh my goodness, the refrigerator was empty. Well, first, this is our, our own little piece of paradise in our backyard with lots of 
pear tree petals all over the water and everything else back there. <laughs> They'd had a lot of wind and rain yeah. while we were gone. Yeah, and a very empty refrigerator because nobody was making salads while we were gone. So the first thing that we got to do the next day, the next day was... It, and those are the actual salads. We were making salads the next day. Oh, that's a picture of Tammy in a museum. <laughs> that I just have a sequence. I was intrigued with the architecture. That's my last non-food slide. Okay. So, anyway. yeah. So we went and we shopped and we restocked our refrigerator and we made our salads and now our refrigerator is full again and we have lots of fresh fruit here and fantastic um, memories as well. Um, Stephanie Spear says, once you got home, how long did it take to replenish groceries, batch prep salads, etc.? Um, you know, we Good had- Good three days. <laughs> yeah, well, we, um, we, we went out the, the next day because we didn't get home until like midnight. And so we went out um, the next day, maybe that first day we just ate. I think the next day we just ate um, frozen food and vegetables from our freezer. Didn't you make a quick freezer. run to somewhere to grab? Like you some... did. You ran to Whole Foods and grabbed a few things right. that next morning. And then we didn't do major grocery shopping until the next day. We had unpacking to do. We had a ton of laundry that we needed to do. And then Tom needed to clean the pool and you know do some outdoor maintenance. And um, the free little library had been hit pretty hard. So I needed to restock our um, little free library. And then, um, so we just ate from the freezer. So one thing that we, you know, always make sure is that when we go on vacation, we make sure that there's going to be food that we can have when we come home in the freezer. And you guys know how, you know, I always stock our freezer. So we had soups, we had rice, and we had frozen fruit and frozen vegetables in the freezer and so you know we could have eaten for um, like three days we just wouldn't have had fresh you know we didn't have any fresh greens well i guess that's not true we had the outdoor garden mm -hmm. um, we have fresh kale different kinds of kale and um uh something else what's the other green we have out there well anyway swiss chard, swiss chard. and so we do actually have some fresh greens out there so but we ate from the freezer until we got to the um, grocery store and then we restocked we you know made our salads and um, got back on track right away because um, you always feel better you know if you're eating better you just feel better so um, Jesse wants to know were there any sharks no sharks <laughs> no we did not see any sharks. Just a couple of guys I saw, I and Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So, Leslie, uh, Leslie, uh, um, yeah, Leslie and John said they found some hummus wraps on Concourse C in Atlanta next to Qdoba. Lucky to find something there. That is great. And so, yeah, you just have to look around if you have time. So, on our flight back, we had no time in Houston because um, by you when you do an international flight when you come back into the United States and you have a layover you have to go collect your luggage then you have to go through customs and then you have to take your luggage and go through TSA security again and so um, by the time we did that um, our in our suitcase our carry-on got flagged and we had to be pulled aside and it had to be looked through because Tom had some of our filming equipment in there and they were curious what that was and so um, they looked at that and um, and so by the time we got to our gate we only had um, they were already lining up to board and so we didn't have any time to eat look for food or anything we just ran to the bathroom and curious thing in coast in costa rica um, we were lined up to board the plane and i thought i heard them call tom's name and so he went up 
you know, and said, did you call my name? And they said, no, we didn't call your name. And a couple minutes later, we heard them call my name and they asked me to come up to the podium. So he went with me and they asked a man, they announced a man's name to come up and they told us that you have been randomly selected to be searched. Okay. So <laughs> they took us, um, back to a couple of tables that they had and um, I got the whole pat down and all of that and they um, went through my purse and they went through my carry-on um, my my backpack and searched it and um, and then they you know went ahead and let us board the plane early so um, that kind of freaked me out just a little bit because I thought oh my gosh what if somebody planted something in in you know on my person or in my bag or my backpack or something but uh, you know of course there wasn't anything um, so Boy, anyway. yeah, they, you know that Tammy Kramer I don't know <laughs> she could be a problem in a, on an airplane I look suspicious yeah I guess I look suspicious I sure hope there was an air marshal there to protect me yeah this you know this little old lady uh, looks suspicious okay, let's check her bag before we wrap up can we cover a couple of announcements we have for let's the coming do week? let's do um, yeah, Jesse says, oh no, random searching. What will they think of dried hummus? I know, right? They didn't even question that. They didn't even ask me what it yeah, was. That, that, that dried hummus was pure and uncut and they weren't <laughs> concerned about it in the least. I know. So, so anyway, um, we hope that that helps you. Uh, we do have, um, we have a, a video, I believe on travel where we show our when we do a road trip we take what we call a suitcase pantry we have a video on that and then we have three blog posts i believe if you just search uh, do a google search nutmeg notebook travel travel and um you know we've shown what we've done on road trips so this helps you with what we do for air travel and if you want to be able to travel on a cruise or even a land trip and not have to worry about the food in the show notes underneath this video where it says more click on more and then take a look at um, the link for the National Health Association and we've also put in there Lisa McCarl the travel agent for the National Health Association um, her contact information is there and check and see what they have available. Also, um, you can just uh, email Lisa and tell her you're interested in some plant-based travel because they do have more cruises coming up. They have some land travel. They have African safaris. Um, they have all kinds of things coming up. We have traveled with them three times now and it's been absolutely fantastic experiences. Some of the best vacations that we've ever had, plant-based or not. Then also we want to let you know, you want to tell them what's coming up on Tuesday, Tom, the February 27th. Yeah, uh, that's Tuesday of this coming... That's in not, two days. Today is Sunday. The 25th. Okay, Tuesday at 10 a.m. We're having Dr. Neil Barnard on our show and another special guest, Shawnee, uh, who she will be sharing her uh, recovery to health story with us. And, and I think we're going to start with Shawnee and then Dr. Bernard's going to come in and talk with us about how the information that he uh, helped her with helped her achieve those goals. So yeah. And he has our, his new book out. Yeah. So we're very privileged to have him on our show this coming week. Um, so please tune in for that. We want to, um, yeah, when we do have the book that we're, he's going to be talking a bit about what's in the book. Yeah, right? I just, I love Dr. Barnard. Um, I'm sure that you do too. He's from the um, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. He does amazing work in the plant-based community, as well as working on getting the um, the food plate for the... Um, working with, with the uh, Food and Drug Administration yes, on, on what FDA. qualifies as, as, as food. Right. And, and what really shouldn't qualify as food. But, exactly. Yeah. So we're super excited and very honored um, that his team asked for us to have him on. And then on March 1st, which is Friday of next week at 7 a.m. Pacific, which is 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10. That's 10 a.m. Eastern. 
Is that right? That's right. We're going live because Woo-hoo. the 2024 Nutmeg Notebook ebook uh, is is going to be released. It's it's published. It's submitted. It's ready to go, and we're releasing it in the Vegan Health Bundle, which is a 10 day opportunity to uh, get a bunch of stuff for a tremendously low price, and we'll give all the details about that. It's hard not to give details. I know, I know. I I, I can feel feel your pain. (laughs) So anyway, join us March 1st. We're having having breakfast at 7 a.m. And and we hope you can join us and learn about our our, uh, 2024 e-book that we're including in that bundle. For those of you that have gotten our... Maybe we should tell them just a little bit what a bundle is because some people don't know, like, what's a bundle? Sure. What is a bundle? What's a bundle? The Vegan Health Bundle 2024. In, in general terms, what is it, Tammy? Okay, so it is a huge collaboration effort. Um, I, I, we can't go into detail, but we can tell you there's over 100 people that are submitting their e-commerce work and it could be a course it could be a video it could be an ebook of recipes it you know it could be all kinds of things so it'll be something whole food plant-based oil free something healthy that is going to help you we all collaborate we pool our resources all of our content and then for just 10 days we offer it to you at a ridiculously low price and it is all e-content you are not getting any hardback books but it will be all things that you can download to your computer and because we are all putting our work together we only offer it for um, 10 days as a way to give back to the plant-based community, as a way to help you garner a whole bunch of information, resources, and tools that can really help you on your whole food plant-based journey. Whether you are brand new and need as many resources as you can, or you've been doing this for a while and you need a refresher, or you need some things that are going to get you back on track, or just give you a boost and get you excited about cooking again, or exercising, or whatever it may be. We're also very unique in the fact that in this bundle, we also have doctors who participate and provide content. Most of the bundles do not have submissions from doctors. And Chef AJ and um, uh, Lissa from Raw Food Romance are the two that coordinate everything and put everything together for us. And then it's just this huge collaboration. So there will be raw food stuff, whole food plant-based, and um, everything will be oil-free if there's recipes. And we'll be telling you all about it on Friday. Yep. So 7 a.m., bright and early, we'll be here. That's when it launches. Yeah. Okay. So we hope that you can join us. If you can't join us that morning at 7 a.m., you will be able to watch the replay. Just as if you've just joined us on this, the replay will be available as soon as we're done. You can go back and watch it again, and it will remain up so that it can be a resource for you if you want to um, look at it again. So we also want to thank our moderators, Jesse, Randy, and Gina for hopping on and helping us. Tiffany couldn't be with us um, tonight, but we really appreciate all the hard work they do for us and how they answer your questions and tell us when we're screwing up, which we oftentimes do. Okay. (laughs) And so that's all we have for this today. We hope to see you on Tuesday um, morning and... um, We also hope to see you on Friday. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get get healthy healthy and stay stay healthy healthy one one meal meal at a time. time. See you Tuesday. Bye. Bye.